Big stories, though. Uh, early on in his reporter career, Paul Lindman covered the story of a, of a whale that washed up on the beaches down in southern Oregon. And uh, a whale washing up, that's not the story. The story is how they wanted to get rid of this whale. Yeah. And this story has lived on for how many years now? That was in that early 70s? Something like that. Yeah, yeah well, take a look. This is, uh, and I don't think that we've ever really ever shown this since then. This is in the entirety. <laughs> this is, I mean, in its entirety. We see it all the time. But of course, if you go to Paul's house, uh, it's on all of the television. Yeah. It's a screensaver. That's right. Yeah. For everything. But, uh, but Paul Lemon reported on a whale washing shore in southern Oregon. Take a look. It had to be said, the Oregon State Highway Division not only had a whale of a problem on its hands, it had a stinking whale of a problem. What to do with one 45-foot, 8-ton whale dead on arrival on the beach near Florence? It had been so long since a whale had washed up in Lane County, nobody could remember how to get rid of one. In selecting its battle plan, the highway division decided the carcass couldn't be buried because it might soon be uncovered. It couldn't be cut up and then buried because nobody wanted to cut it up, and it couldn't be burned. So dynamite it was, some 20 cases or a half ton of it. The hope was that the long-dead Pacific gray whale would be almost disintegrated by the blast and that any small pieces still around after the explosion would be taken care of by seagulls and other scavengers. Indeed, the seagulls had been standing nearby all day. As everything was being made ready, we asked George Thornton, the highway engineer in charge of the project, for his final observation. Well, I'm confident that it'll work. The only thing is we're not sure just exactly how much uh, explosives it'll take to disintegrate this thing so the scavengers, seagulls and crabs and whatnot can clean it up. Is there any chance it might be more than a one-day job? Uh, if there's any large chunks left and uh, we may have to do some other cleanup, possibly set another charge. The dynamite was buried primarily on the leeward side of the big mammal, so as most of the remains would be blown toward the sea. About 75 bystanders, most of them residents who had first found the whale to be an object of curiosity before they tired of its smell, were moved back a quarter of a mile away. The sand dunes there were covered with spectators and land lubber newsmen shortly to become land blubber newsmen, for the blast blasted blubber beyond all believable bounds. Our camera stopped rolling immediately after the blast. The humor of the entire situation suddenly gave way to a run for survival as huge chunks of whale blubber fell everywhere. Pieces of meat passed high over our heads while others were falling at our feet. The dunes were rapidly evacuated as spectators escaped both the falling debris and the overwhelming smell. A parked car over a quarter of a mile from the blast site was the target of one large chunk. The passenger compartment literally smashed. Fortunately, no human was hit as badly as the car. However, everyone on the scene was covered with small particles of dead whale. As for the success of the effort, well, the seagulls who were supposed to clean things up were nowhere in sight, either scared away by the explosion or kept away by the smell. That didn't really matter. The remaining chunks were of such a size that no respectable seagull would attempt to tackle anyway. As darkness began to set in, the highway crews were back on the beach burying the remains, including a large piece of the carcass which never left the blast site. It might be concluded that should a whale ever wash ashore in Lane County again, those in charge will not only remember what to do, they'll certainly remember what not to do. <laughs> that is amazing. 42 years ago, 1970. Wow. And, uh, and Paul Lindman joins us now uh, on the phone. He's over at the 1190KEX studios where he just concluded his program. Paul, yes. welcome back to AM Northwest. Thanks, guys. It's good to be with you. You just had to show the whole doggone thing, didn't well, you? Well, you know, we, we, it occurs to us, as much as we've seen it, we've never really seen it in its entirety. And, you know, that's still an amazing story and, and very well done. And I love the line, Paul, the blast blasted blubber. <laughs> You know, I've had my grown sons repeat that to me so many times. I'm sick to death of it. But, but in all seriousness, you know, it was decided a long time ago by uh, media watchers. That was the single most watched television news story in history. And many years ago, the BBC uh, did research indicating it was the fifth most watched video ever. At that time, 350 million unique hits, and that was a long time ago. 
Uh, and you've received a nickel for every airy. <laughs> <laughs> I got, uh, I think it was $120 from ABC uh, back in 1970, and that's pretty much been it. Uh, as, we, as we sit here today, Paul, and, and talk about a K2 celebrating its 50th anniversary on the air today, you were here for about half of that. I was in two chunks. I started at K2 in 1969, and when I left in 2003, I think I had 26 years uh, in total at, at K2. And and uh, as you found out since, Dave, it, it was a great place to be, and especially because they let me do this this series I did for years, The Spirit of the Northwest. We did 1,215 stories on inspirational people right here at home, and I don't know of another television series of that length on such positive subjects anywhere. Yeah, and uh, and it was a and it was a good series. Well, Paul, thanks for joining us. Today. I know you're 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 busy. You've got a lot of things going on, but I I, I got to tell you that well video. I don't know that I've ever seen it from beginning to end. That's the first time I've seen it. That's the entire good. length. It was very really good. Watch. Really, very well, well done. Well, I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, um, Helen uh, wrapped us. Uh, I like your gray suit and tie, but yeah. your <laughs> your hair looks a little weird today. <laughs> I, I just hope I never wash up on a beach. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what? We know what to do with him if he does, though, right, Paul? The blast, blast, and blubber beyond all believable bounds. And no self-respecting single would ever dare. <laughs> Paul Lindman, good to talk to you. Thanks, See you later, guys. my friend. Paul Lindman uh, hosts the morning update on 1190 KEX Radio and, of course, hosted this show for many years and at K2 for uh, even more.